Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we're fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My book, Beyond the Lines, is about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness, which is what this show is all about. My special guest today has proven himself to be one of the best if not the best college volleyball coach in the United States. He is our University of Hawaii men's volleyball coach, Charlie Wade. And today, we are going beyond volleyball. Hey, Coach Charlie, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Now, Coach Charlie, I want to ask you, when, when did you first start getting interested in playing volleyball? Uh, okay, so... Um living in a small town in northern indiana um and while we were the county seat the biggest town around it was still only ten thousand people it's a small rural community and i saw on um you know one of those kind of cbs wildwood of sports something on the weekend in those days we only had three channels so it didn't get very many uh and i saw this thing from uh, beach volleyball at King Harbor in Redondo Beach, California. And I was born in Redondo Beach, California, but we moved when I was just an infant. So I didn't, that was the first time I'd seen it and like, wow, that's, that's where I'm from. That's, you know, so that, that really got me interested. And then um, uh, fast forward about a year, probably two years later, I graduated from high school and got in a car with a buddy and drove from Indiana out to uh, Southern California. Um, looking to play some volleyball. Wow. So what is it about volleyball that you love so much? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of everything, you know? I mean, it was just, I, I, I play golf and I played basketball and, you know, uh, volleyball was just a really unique thing where it wasn't just about who could run the fastest and jump the highest. There's uh, a high degree of skill. Um, and, and pretty complex when you start to understand, you know, uh, the, just the strategy and stuff and what it takes to play at a high level. Now, what is it about coaching volleyball that you love so much as well now? Uh, I would say, you know, it's just the, the quest and the gratification to, uh, um, of, you know, improving people's lives and bringing joy to people. And, um, you know, it's, it's kind of ongoing, obviously, forever, and just, just the journey that, that comes with uh, helping people try to be the best. Well, Coach Charlie, I mean, you are, um, I honestly believe you're, you're the best college volleyball coach in the, in the country. And last year, our UH men's tennis team, uh, volleyball team made it to the championship final. And then this year, for most of the season, you guys were ranked number one. Now, in order to do that, you have to have a superior culture of excellence. What is your team's culture like? Yeah, and we've been on a pretty good run now, you know, going back uh, to 2015 or so. Um, we have spent a lot of time uh, defining and um, reinforcing the things that are important to us and what we've defined, and it comes out of... Um, kind of a mantra of figure out what's important, focus on what you can control. Um, if you've ever noticed on the back of the guys, uh, warm up shirts and in our practice shirts, there's the word alaka'i, uh, which is Hawaiian word for leader. And that's also an acronym for us. Um, you know, it's akamai, lokahi, uh, alapa, kuleana, akeu, ikaika. And th that is, um, <clears throat> you know, the things that we want the guys just to focus on, and that would be uh, academics, teamwork, skill, um, responsibility, just kind of the energy and spirit that they bring, um, and the strength component, you know, committed to running faster, jumping higher, hitting harder. And then each one of those also, um, we award with a symbol in Hawaiian culture, um, you know, and I can really go <laughs> off in detail on that, but, you know, it's, it's been about defining something that the guys can focus in uh, on a daily basis and, and just staying committed to that. I love hearing those uh, insights. And Coach Charlie, you know, you're, you're big on character and your team has, your individual players have great character. Your team has great character collectively. Um, 
Tell me about your four seniors that are, you know, that you had on this year's team. How special are they? Yeah, just a great group of young men. Um, you know, th three of them were fifth year guys. You know, and I've always said, you know, everyone's better in their fifth year than their fourth year. Um, you're just older, smarter, more mature. You know, these guys have won at an unprecedented rate. Um, you know, and they've been among the best players uh, in the world at their position uh, for quite some time. They've all represented their their home countries at one time or another in international competition. And, um, you know, just like I said, they're really good volleyball players. They can play at a high level. Um, but they've also helped us sustain a culture where um, we also have the highest grade point average of any team on the West Coast and um, really just committed to winning and committing to representing Hawaii. No, I love hearing that, you know, the academic part of it, you know, because obviously they're, I mean, amazing sport athletes in volleyball. But I mean, without academics, I mean, sports becomes uh, you can't do any sports. So that's a huge part that you guys are focused on on the academics as well. Now, Coach Charlie, I want to ask you, how do you get your team to buy in to your philosophy, to your team's goals? Yeah, that's, um, I mean, that's the part that takes time. Yeah, I mean, the, the first part there is about, you know, having a message, having something that defines you. And then the buy-in is everything. You know, we, I've seen lots of coaches. Um, and I say this, you know, most coaches, you've been doing it for a while. You know enough about the ball. You know enough about going out to the practice court you know, field wherever you are and get the balls and get the players and you can reach a level of um, efficiency and production that allow you to keep your job forever. But it's the, it's the part about having the message and then the buy-in. The buy-in is the tricky part. Um, and that is, uh, I think for us, um, you know, being part of something that's bigger than just yourself or even bigger than the team, you know, representing the state of Hawaii, I think the the part about for us having that piece that has the wine language and has a wine culture. And for me, it's very important that we perpetuate those things and that they're a part of who we are and what we stand for. Um, you know, and it, uh, I had read a book over the summer and I had the team read the book going into it. And it really, um, it really reinforced a lot of what we've been working on for years. And it's, uh, the book legacy by, uh, Kerr, you know, it's about the all blacks and, and it, and it said very profoundly, I thought that when your message is about something that makes you a better person, um, makes you a better teammate, makes you a better player, makes you a better uh, member of community, father, husband, whatever it is, that the buy-in is much deeper. It really is. Um, so for us, you know, getting the buy-in has been um, an ongoing quest. You know, and we, we've, like I said, we've been pretty fortunate to have on this run where guys are really bought in, you know, they're, and they're doing their best in, in everything that we've identified for them. Um, but having that, having the culture be defined by things that, that make you a better person, uh, I think is really important. Now, Coach Charlie, I mean, you have players from around the world and you know how you were talking about the Hawaiian culture and, your sh and that's a big part of it. Tell me more about those little details about how you're incorporating the the Hawaiian culture into your team? Yeah, I mean, aside, like I said, from using the the, the symbolism of the things that we've identified. So I, I, I you know, I went over the Alakai matrix there a little bit, and each of those things are, um, are represented by, um, you know, what I'd call a piece of art in Hawaiian culture, something that symbolizes, you know, like the smartest guy um, is a guy with the highest grade point average, and that is symbolized by a Hawaiian fish hook. Um, the skill part is an ulu mica, you know? And so each one of these things we, we give to the players if they're, you know, if they've achieved in that category. And then for me, like that, that ulu mica or the poi pounder or, you know, the uh, uh, a statue of ku or whatever it is, that's gonna sit on a guy's desk. It's gonna sit on a shelf in his house. And for years, for the rest of his life, People are going to look at it and ask him, like, what is that? What does it mean? And then he's going to have to define that. He's going to have to explain that. And this, it will only help perpetuate not only the, the mindset and the ideals, the values that we hold, uh, you know, to be most important. Um, it also helps, like I said, perpetuate Hawaiian language and Hawaiian culture worldwide. You know, I see the guy sitting in Bulgaria with, uh, 
you know, an Ulamica sitting on his, and somebody's going to ask him and he's, he's going to have to explain that. So for me, there's, uh, there's lots of peripheral benefits uh, aside from this being our, our chosen path, path of endeavor. I love hearing that coach Charlie. And for many years, you coached uh, with Dave Shoji uh, for the Wahini volleyball. And what have, what have you found to be some of the differences in coaching men versus women? there's certainly overall, I mean, the game's kind of the same. There's more similarities than differences. You know, the most practical difference between the, and the collegiate level is uh, the women get 12 full scholarships and the men get 4.5 significant difference, you know, and I, I look now back at, man, how much talent could you put together with 12 full scholarships? Uh, but four and a half is our reality. And that's what we deal with. Um, the, the, there are different animals, you know, uh, the men want to keep score. They want to compete over everything. Um, you know, you have to be more direct. If, if you say like, look, we're working on serve receive and we say, Hey, look, you know, we have to be better at serve receive. If you say that to a group of men, they typically there's guys going to be like, well, he's talking about that guy or somebody else. And if you say it to a group of women, they, they take it more personally, like, Oh, He's talking about me. I have to be better at serve receive. And with the men, you have to be more direct and say, look, you have to be better at serve receive. Jimmy, that's you have to be better at it. You can't just throw out these blanket statements. Uh, and I'd say the other part too, um, women will buy in quicker. You know, once you've defined what you're about and here's what we're, we're going to work on, they'll buy in and they'll try things um, that may not show immediate results quicker than the men will. Um, I had one person explain to me once or read it somewhere. Uh, that men start wars. Sometimes they start them over women, but they're generally in the history of the world, men start wars. So it takes a little longer to, uh, to get them to buy in. And um, that just to me is more, uh, it just reinforces more why you have to have a message and why that message has to be very clear. So, you know, through these years, how, how, have you, how has your coaching style evolved through all of these years? Well, I would think, you know, over time, you just become more patient, you know, you gain perspective, um, perspective from being a father and being a husband and just, just living more. I, I think it's one of the things that I did um, kind of get from Shoji and being around him um, that you can't solve everything right now, you know, as a young man and as a young coach, you know, we, we try to solve everything. And as soon as it comes up, if there's a conflict or something, you know, we try to rush out and, and fix it right now where sometimes you can just let it play out. Um, and then there's the part two, just what we do in the practice gym. Um, you know, we've, we've kind of evolved because uh, I think um, like if you're still doing the same stuff in the practice gym that you were doing five years ago, let alone 25, uh, you probably haven't gotten much better. You know, we spend a lot more time with what I'd call like hand on ball where guys are snapping and spinning balls that, you know, at different lengths and different uh, distances and different speeds um, just to help get that kind of calibrated where they can, they can control the ball better. Oh, yeah, that's great. I, I love hearing those insights from you. Coach Charlie, we're going to take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to continue going beyond volleyball, all right? No problem. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Coach Charlie Wade. We will be back in a quick minute. Aloha, I'm Grace Loddick, the host of Educating Ourselves in These Difficult Times on Think Tech Hawaii. Our show deals with media and education and is streamed live on Think Tech bi-weekly at 12 noon on Thursdays. Thank you for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. Aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is one of the top, if not the top, college volleyball coach in the United States. He is Coach Charlie Wade, and today we are going beyond volleyball. 
Coach Charlie, you know, I know a lot of young volleyball coaches that really admire you and what you've done as a coach. Who is a coach that you admire? Um, the first name that comes to mind for me is a gentleman by the name of Larry Long. You're probably going, why do I know Larry Long? You don't. Um, Larry Long was a little league coach that I had. Um, you know, it's got to be now. Uh, 45 years ago or something. Um, and I just thought, you know, and it, he was such a great man and a great father and a great husband. And I just really admired him. And he, you know, as I, as I started getting into coaching, I know that I've, I've thought about him a lot and then coaches that you've probably heard more. I think I, I kind of lean towards guys that um, are empowering to the players, you know, that while I'll have, you know, strict discipline and, a, and you know, and, and hold people accountable, but, but allow for some flexibility and allow for, um, you know, just people to evolve. And I, I'd go with Joe Madden, um, who I know worked a lot, even though I've never met Joe Madden. Uh, he worked a lot by a guy that I, I spent time studying with, Ken Revisa, who's a sports psychologist who passed recently. And, um, and I think the other one uh, would be a guy like Doc Rivers. And he is, and I've been able to watch his career, obviously, and he's one at the highest level. Um, and I've had an opportunity to meet him a couple different times throughout. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of where I, I like, go. I like that. And Coach Charlie, you know what I find amazing is, you know, the there's so much excitement that your teams bring into the Stan Sheriff Center. And, I mean, the, the crowds that come in, the fans. I mean, what, what are your thoughts about playing and, you know, having your teams play in front of all of these fans? Yeah, it's just amazing. You know, like I said, I, I got here in 95 and right when the Stan Sheriff Center opened and it was such a new thing and both the men and the women were averaging, you know, 8,000 and it was, you know, just amazing experience to be a part of. And, and then over time, you know, that everybody has kind of dropped back and got kind of routine. And so when I took the job in 2009, you know, that certainly was the goal to, to get it back to that level. And I know a lot of people thought it wasn't possible. Um, but it's happened. Here we are, you know, fast forward 10, 11 years and we're selling out the Stan Sheriff Center. And it's it's just so humbling to be a part of something that so many of the people in the community, you know, rally behind and you see how important it is to them. And, you know, and I'm proud to be able to, to do something that brings the community together and um, and gives the community something that they can have joy in and, and, and be proud of. Well, that's for sure. You're doing that. Definitely. Coach Charlie, in my books, I, I talk about, you know, welcoming adversity and really focusing on mindset and attitude, and you do the same. How do you get your teams in the right mindset to look forward to challenges? Well, I think it comes a lot from just, like I've said, just the mantra of, of who we are and what defines us, you know? And I think that's so key, like I've mentioned, that having something that defines you on a daily basis that the players can focus on, on a daily basis. Um, you know, and this is kind of evolved, you know, I, back before I had kids and I used to read a lot more, <laughs> I still find time. But I was, I was pretty obsessed with reading, you know, the most successful people, whether they were in business or in sports. So, and as you read, whether it was Wooden or Krzyzewski or, um, you know, guys in the business world, it was the kind of the common themes for me were, uh, figure out what import, what's important, figure out what's, what you can control, you know? And I remember having a conversation with Lily Kahomoku when she was playing and, you know, we had a great run where, you know, we went to the final four, three out of four years. And she's asking me, well, why are we going to win? You know, cause she's like, and I agreed every year, you know, we, we sit in the locker room and go, we're going to go to the final four. We're going to go to the national championship. And she's like, well, I would imagine the same's happening in Nebraska and Florida and, Stanford. And so what is it that defines us? And that really started me on that journey of kind of, you know, coming up with something, um, something that they can hang their hat on every day. So the time your feet hit the bed in the morning to the time you go to bed at night, if we, if you stay focused on what is now for us, and this is the third version of this. It's one of those things that when you're a long time assistant, you're like, when I'm the head coach, I'm going to do this. So <laughs> when I, when I was at Pacific, it was, uh, uh, we called it AFPAC and it was, a uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of on the, the Pacific word mark. 
um, and we defined it, but it's really the categories have all stayed the same. And when I came back in 2009 and 2010, it was Vaztec that was actually on the back of the shirts for a while. And then with the work of Judge uh, Thomas Kalakakui, he's kind of helped me over the last several years rebrand it um, to have this input of Hawaiian language, Hawaiian culture. So um, for me, it's like that. That's kind of what defines us. And I think you'd ask the guy that the guys, um, you would get some version of that answer. No, you're right. And you mentioned about controlling everything that you have control about. And I talk about that in my books as well, because there's a huge difference between necessary stress and unnecessary stress. And all of us, we can control so many things that are within our control. And we don't have to worry about things that's beyond our control. For you, I want to know about your coaching system, because a lot of the great coaches have their system. But oftentimes, you know, depending on the players that you have that year or the talent that you have, you might adapt your system to the talent or players that you have. Do you do the same? For sure. And I, uh, there are a lot of coaches that like to talk about their system. And they'll be like, well, in my system, if we do, you do this and this <laughs> player does this. And I'm like, look, you want to know what my system is? And this goes to the part two, like, that means you're just hanging on to something you've been doing forever. And your, your system, you were doing that in 1985. Look, I, my system is let's figure out what you're good at. Let's see if we can put it in the game and you can help us get 25 before they do. <laughs> Straight up. That's kind of the end result. And, uh, and that may change uh, night to night. It may change set to set. It, may ch it certainly changes year to year uh, based on the talent you have. But the, the central theme is uh, let's figure out what you're good at. Let's keep working on uh, individual technique. Let's keep working on your mindset. Let's keep working on your discipline, your commitment, and uh, find a way that we can get you on the floor and help us get 25 before they do. I totally agree with you. It's all about, it's all about building on to the strengths, making their strengths even stronger. Um, Coach Charlie, what is your team's identity? You know, a lot of the great athletes or great teams, they have an identity about them. What do you feel your team's identity is? Yeah, and I, and that's one, too, that I think is probably better answered by players. And I, I would think that you would get some version of uh, alakai, and that is, you know, our identity is that we're trying to be the best at everything. We're trying to look like professionals, trying to act like professionals. We're trying to, you know, do our best in the classroom, in the practice gym, in the weight room. And um, I think for us, that's... Um, you know, like I said, it's, it's been our path. And I think that's, um, if you ask guys that are in the program, um, that question, you get some version of that. Yeah, that's great. And coach Charlie, what do you feel is the best advice you ever received in your life? Hmm. Uh, I'll say this, uh, um, Chris McLaughlin. Yeah. And a, and a mentor and a coach. And, you know, uh, he said, and it, it fits in with what we're doing. I remember having a conversation one time and he talked about how important he thought it was to have um, regular meetings with the players, you know, and I'm, this is for, from a professional standpoint. So, um, but it does speak to just overall, like, you know, how important communicating is, you know, we're always making observations and important to share ob uh, those observations and building relationships. So, you know, Chris and I talked about it from the coaching standpoint, you know, having that communication with the players. So we on a regular basis have individual meetings with every single guy. We're still doing them through this and they're just on the phone or through zoom. Um, but just having, taking the time because you're, you're building a relationship. You're not just communicating and talking about, we may talk about school. We may talk about volleyball. We may talk about, anything um but it's taking the time and building those relationships and and taking the time to communicate what you think and what you feel about things um that we both feel are important i just think that's uh it's been really helpful yeah it's about consistency and really caring about what their goals are what, what's important to them and and it they're that that's how they get the the buy-in where they trust and respect you even more because they they know you care about them more than just volleyball players and Coach Charlie, what, what is a valuable lesson you learned in life so far? Well, aside from that one, and then the other, um, just the, 
the part two that I've said that kind of defines about, you know, figure out what's important, focus on what you control. We see this all the time where people in various levels of success and well into their life, you know, they get obsessed over things that either aren't important or out of their control. And, you know, so I think that's, um, while it's very simple, you know, I think it's one of those everybody would agree with, but did you really learn it? Um, and then I think the other part, just, uh, you know, how important it is to be calm and to be confident in adversity, because there's going to be tough times, you know, and when it's most stressful, I think it's important to, as a leader, um, to show the people around you that you're in control and you know what you're doing. Um, and on the, the flip side of it, to have the willingness to show emotion when you feel it's necessary. And whether that's, uh, you know, vulnerable emotion and something that you feel passionate about or uh, animated emotion when it's something you feel passionate about that, um, you know, when that opportunity presents itself, um, that you're willing to, uh, to, to put yourself out there. Yeah. Coach Charlie, I want to ask you one more thing before we wrap. What gives you fulfillment? Uh, besides spending time with my, my wife and kids, you know, which we've, this is, I think it have been a blessing in this, what we're in, I'll kind of be in sequestered here. Um, and walking my dogs that's uh, enjoy that. Um, and then, like I said, just the, uh, the never ending quest, uh, for just that elusive national championship. And really it's more than just the trophy, uh, but the journey to get there and, and helping people become uh, better fathers, better husbands, uh, you know, better members of our community, helping them to get on a path that's going to allow them to be successful for life. Coach Charlie, I want to thank you for your insights and taking time to be on the show today. You're a great man with great character and your teams are a reflection of you and you are a reflection of them. And thank you for joining me today. That's very kind of you, Rusty. I appreciate it. Aloha. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and BooksHawaii.net. I hope that Coach Charlie and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. Yeah.